Good evening and welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex Lord. We've got a lot of great stuff to talk about, and we're going to start with the Red Hot Atlanta Braves. They won again on Wednesday afternoon. Colby Allard got the spot start. It looks like he might stay in the rotation because I'm not as high. I'm not like it's almost like Jared Schuster. I got a little more faith in Aller than I do Jared Schuster. I mean, he, but he looked great yesterday. 4.2 innings. He was on a pitch limit, only threw 70 pitch. Uh, you know, he threw a little over 70 pitches. He was, I think, 70 pitches was his limit, but they wanted him to finish off Gallo. He got the strikeout, um, brought in Kirby Yates to finish the fifth inning, and he ends up throwing 4.2 scoreless with eight strikeouts. And even though he's on a pitch limit, that's the second most of his career. His control was really good. I thought his curveball looked good. Um, I, I, overall, I thought he looked really good. And I said it, I actually wrote an article. It should be up on the site by the time this airs. You know, this is a, just another reason why the Braves do not need to add starting pitching at the deadline. You got Max Fried and Kyle Wright coming back. You already got three established starters. It, th there's five right there. You got Michael Soroka, who we're going to talk about. He's in line to start on Friday. He's been really good in Gwinnett. There's six. Now you got Colby Allard in the mix. And hey, don't forget about AJ Smith Schauber. You have legitimately eight starters. And that's why the Braves have been able to withstand these injuries is because they have so much depth and it's a testament to Alex Anthopoulos. We talk about it all the time and the depth goes beyond just the, just the starters, like the Jesse Chavez is the Ben Heller that you picked up in the middle of the season, the Nick Anderson that you signed to a non-guaranteed deal, you know, the Kirby Yates that you took a chance on two years ago, the Sam Hilliard. And I know he hasn't played since May 23rd, but that first six weeks of the season, he meant something to this team. He earned you a win. He got you a win. Kevin, the Kevin Pillar, the Travis Darno, the depth of this team is just so unbelievable, which is why I'm like, there's no team like this. There's no, there's no holes on this team. And Colby Allard was just another example. And it seems like everything, especially right now, the Braves touch it. They just can do no wrong. The bats don't really show up. They throw probably their best pitching performance of the season in a game where you were kind of like, Hey, maybe Col Colby Allard can give me two or three innings. Maybe give me two or three. He gives you 4.2 on 70 pitches against a decent twins lineup. It's, they ain't no scrubs. Like, they're still a, a competitive team on most nights. And then the bullpen comes in and gives up one hit over 4.1 innings and sets them down in order, I think, because A.J. Minner got a double play on a fly ball. Like, it, what, what? how do you explain that? Like, they just – they can do no wrong. And then you get a red-hot Marlins team coming in. But what do I say about – what do I say? This The Braves are where – you know, the, the Tigers, where dreams come to die, Tiger Stadium. The Braves are where win streaks come to die. Uh, they did it against the Reds. They did it against the Phillies and the Marlins are up next. And I feel bad for those poor fish. Cause I know they're coming in hot <laughs> and they are playing amazing baseball. Let me, I don't want to, I don't want to, they are playing absolutely amazing baseball. Their rotation has a 0 0.52 ERA over their last five games. Their rotation is might be the best in baseball. Actually, I'm not even saying might. I'm going to go out and say it is the best in baseball. Good luck though. Good luck. That's all I'm saying. And there, I don't have to have any reasoning behind it. This is where win streaks come to die. At the very least, the Braves are winning two out of three. I hope they sweep them. If they sweep them, they'll have a nine and a half game lead in the division <laughs> going into July or at like the beginning of July. Going into everything, July. everything's clicking for the Atlanta Braves. Um, I said I said it in a tweet yesterday that it just feels like you said it. Everything the Braves touch turns to gold. So it feels like I could go out there and throw a couple of score lists or uh, knock in a, a couple of runs. I mean, it it's crazy that like every single person that comes to the Braves just plays a little bit better than they were expected to. And, you know, it, 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 it's a locker room thing. It's a coaching staff thing. Uh, when you don't have the pressure on yourself, you know, everybody just performs a little bit better. When you know that the guys have got your back, whether it's the offense has got the defense back, the defense got the offense back, the pitching's have the, uh, in the lineup, everybody is in it for one another. And it's honestly like, it just warms your heart to see how much these guys love to play baseball and love each other. I mean, regardless of the situation, it feels like they're just having fun out there. Like you could see Ozzy smiling, uh, Ronald Cunha and Ozzy jumping and high fiving, uh, Orlando Garcia and Eddie Rosario smacking each other. You know, that was my fly ball. You know, it, it's just fun to see these kids. They're just kids having fun playing. It's just a game and they're having fun doing it. Uh, there is no uh, weakness on this team because. You said it. It just seems like every single time the Braves bats have just been unbelievable this month. You know, you said it the other uh, podcast. All of our podcasts will be on YouTube. Please go check those out. All of social media and the website, Sports Talk ATL. Um, 
you said it. I think the team has like a 930 OPS in the month. Yeah, I think it's down to like 910 because yesterday wasn't great. But they're still hitting over 300, 302. They've hit and 55 then, homers. They're one, they're, they, tomorrow, on Friday, they go for the franchise record and wins 21 and 4. Now, I kind of want to look that up, like the other teams that went 21. Did they have as many off days as the Braves? Because the Braves have had five off days this month. Like, because 21 and 4 seems like that should be the franchise record. Like, that, that seems like a very, very tough mark to beat. So I kind of wanted to look that up because they've had five off days. You know, there's 30 days in June. They only played 25 games. That's a lot of off days for a single month. Um, but yeah, I mean, they just, I want to talk a little bit about the bullpen because I said the Braves don't need a starter. They definitely don't need an offensive player. And now I'm getting to the point where the bullpen, where I'm like, I, like, it would be great. It would be great to, to get an Araldis Chapman, but I'm looking at Kirby Yates, man. And the guy, we're talking about a guy who was a closer, the best closer in baseball before his injury with the San Diego Padres. 1.19 ERA. Didn't walk batters. The first half of the season, the first two months of the season, he was a walk machine, walking nearly a batter an inning. He hasn't walked a guy in his last, I think, 11 innings, and he has 18 strikeouts. You know, his, his, his K-9 is hovering around 15, 16. That's what he was um, in San Diego, and he's never been this big power arm. He's always been you know, 94 miles per hour with movement on his fastball and then a fantastic splitter. And that's what he looks like right now. Now, I'm not going to say he's going to get back to that level, but the Braves don't need him to be at that level. He he looks like he could be a, a, a setup man. Now, it's a small sample size. I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but I, I'm, I'm going to be watching that closely, how Brian Stinker uses him, because I could see, you know, we talked about bumping Nick Anderson back. If Kirby Yates can be that guy in the eighth inning, you know, what does this team really need? I mean, if he can be anywhere close to where he was back in 2019, you ain't going to get that at the trade deadline, uh, even like the Chapmans and stuff like that. He's just as good as them. And I know the, a lot of Braves fans don't realize that, uh, that haven't paid attention to baseball around the league. But this guy was, I mean, he finished the top 10 in the Cy Young as a closer, as a closer. That's how dominant he was. So if he could be your setup, man, it's like, do you really need to go out there and get anything? I, I don't know. And then you got Jesse Chavez and Dylan Lee coming back. Ben Heller has been a revelation. How is Ben Heller? How is he not on another? This is what I'm saying. Like, it seems easy. Like these, this guy throws 97 with ridiculous movement and then has a sweeper to come off of that. Like he looks legit. How is he not on an MLB roster? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. And Alex is not blessed with like, I'll, I'll trade for him for cash. Like, thanks man. And he's in there finishing games for us. Sometimes it's like, it's like, it's like operating a, 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 a like a MLB the show thing on rookie mode. It's like, oh, this guy's a free agent? Like, sick. He's a 93. I, I'm going to push back. I know you're just saying that just to kind of emphasize how great the bullpen has been. Um, but I'm still, you know, I'd rather overkill the bullpen than anything. You say it frequently, how volatile relief pitching can be. Uh, and we're just halfway through the season. And I'm not saying that this Kirby Yates isn't here to stay. Uh, I, I've expressed my, you know, concern with Nick Anderson. Um, and to this point, they've all, you know, proven me wrong. They've all performed, you know, up to the standard. But if there's one thing, you know, you can get at a trade deadline, it's cheap. And you don't know how your, your relief core is going to look in, you know, the next few months just because of how volatile it is. You overkill it, even if it's still, you know, in an amazing core and they're performing. Give me another high leverage arm. I want a guy who can be, you know, having an enrolled to Chapman or somebody like that who, when you get to the seventh inning with a lead, seven, eight, nine, it's over. I want that kind of security. It's kind of like the security we had when the 2021 World Series going into the playoffs. It wasn't like that, but when we got to the into the playoffs, it was seven, eight, nine. We were done. We could pack it up. It's like Listen, I'm fine. I want, I want that. that. I want I'm that. Still, I'm still a uh, like a super proponent of adding to the bullpen. I'm just telling you, if Kirby Yates, you have a month till that we even have to make this decision. Yeah. If Chavez and Lee come back healthy, and Kirby Yates is out there tossing like this for a month I, like i'm not i'm not opposed to not adding anything because like javez lee uh anderson like those are good middle relievers if, if kirby yates can become your setup guy and all those guys can be setup guys too i mean we're talking about dylan lee who's been one of the best relievers for the braves for the last two years and i know you know because people don't throw 98 miles per hour we just we kind of write them off as like oh this guy's not dominant but like they have been dominant chavez has been dominant i don't care what anyone's not only is he out of a 1.55 ERA, he's striking out nearly 12 guys per nine. I don't care that he throws 90 miles per hour. He's figured something out when he's with the Braves. Kirby Yates is now 
striking out 15 batters per nine. I don't care if he throws 99. I know everyone wants a guy that throws 99. It's sexy. It's sexy. I would love Aroldis Chapman. I'd love Scott Barlow. I'd love David Bender, like the all-star closers. I don't know how much they're going to cost at the trade deadline. And if it costs you an arm and a leg, I mean, maybe the Braves can't make it happen. This is going to be a seller's market. Everything is going to be high price. I'm just saying if this group, I, I've said it since the beginning. I mean, pe when people were talking crap about the bullpen and once again, pat myself on the back, I told you this group was going to be just fine. And now they have two guys injured and they're still just fine. Ben Heller. I mean, I just we think about where, where are you even going to put these guys? Where, we like, haven't are we even cut? mentioned. Are we going to cut McHugh. Jesse Chavez again? Is we that what we're going to do? Colin McHugh. Colin McHugh's been really, really good as well, of late he, too. He's been, he's, he's been struggling of past late. few, past few outings he's been good dude he just gave us like three scoreless uh no he gave up a, a two-run homer the other it doesn't matter it, like I still believe in McHugh I'm just saying in general like this group is is very good and I just don't know who you kick out if you go add someone like already they're gonna kick have to kick out a couple people when they bring Chavez and Lee back I don't even know like someone asked me who do we kick out I don't even know um but uh if you okay. add another person, you're gonna have to kick someone else out. So, like, who are we kicking out? Like, are we kicking out Joe Jimenez, who's actually been pretty good? Are, are we kicking out? We're not kicking out Yates. Are we kicking out Nick Anderson? Are we kicking out Ben Heller? Like, I, Michael Tonkin is the first person to me. I think you can say, "Hey, man, you've done great. You'll get a World Series ring at the end. You've done your job. Now move on." But then you got to kick out another person. Whether it's, I guess, Derek Rodriguez. No, they just optioned him. You could kick out Allard, I, but it's it's just like. It's ridiculous that they just have an embarrassment of riches. And like, we're talking about the weakest point. We don't even have two of our best relievers and they're still doing a really, really damn good job. With, same thing with the rotation without two of our starters coming up after the break. Michael Soroka is poised to make his season debut at Truist Park.